this time. Okay, guys. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on vision board training and kind of your goal setting for the year. So um, goal setting is one of the most powerful things that you can do for your business. You want to think about what will move you forward most in your business. So that's what you always want to be thinking. Like when you're thinking of a task you're doing, is this something that's going to move me to where I want to get next? Or is this something, you know, it's kind of almost like the work harder, not smarter thing. Like think about like what is going to move you farther towards your goal? Um, I mean, like if you were saying, I want to recruit two people this month and you haven't made a single recruiting outreach this month, is that... <laughs> you know, is that moving you forward? No, like you have to do the work. So um, what do you have to do when you're getting ready to go on vacation? Prep, plan. Yeah. Hmm? So what are the things, things that you have to do? Yeah. Lori, what did you just have to do when you went to Florida? Because you were gone for what, three weeks? A little over, yeah. Yeah. So what all the different things that you had, I mean, that's a big chunk of time. Well, I had to pack and I had to get all my parties set up and ready to roll. So I didn't have to set up parties while I was on vacation. I just had well, to participate in them. That <laughs> too, <laughs> that too, but like you had to do your laundry to re get ready to pack, right? Oh, right, right. Yeah, right, and you had to yeah. figure out how many days you were going to be there. And do I have access to laundry? Can I do my... Wash do I have enough <laughs> pairs of underwear? Right. Do I have enough pairs of underwear? Did you have to like stop your mail? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So you had to stop your mail. I mean, three weeks is that was, that's a long time. So like you have to do like all of that stuff when you're planning. I mean, when it comes down to it, you even have to like pick where you're going, right? Like pick where you're going, research some things that you might be able to do while you're there. Um, we're like in the process um, of trying to figure out, like we rented a lake house last summer, but this summer, um, like it's Diego's last summer going into his senior year. So we were like, well, maybe we'll do more of like a destination thing this time. And we usually, or we're last summer we did too. And Daryl's done this in the past. We're going to go with my sister and my brother-in-law and their daughter. So we're thinking about going to new Orleans. So we're already thinking about like, do you think we can fly? Like that's going to be expensive for six of us to do that. You know, so should we drive, you know, all this stuff, like, is it going to be and like, should we drive our car or would it be like more like more like like because our car I mean our car is in great it's like still in great shape but wear and tear wise would it be smarter to like rent a car for the week you know because it does get kind of crowded even in our traverse when all the kids are in it you know so just all that stuff like so we're already kind of like spinning and thinking you know and then do you want to do a hotel do you want to do an Airbnb do you you know what I mean like it's crazy so we've been kind of thinking about all that stuff so um you know, you have to do all of that stuff. You know, where are you exactly headed? Hold on. I lost my. So you would have never gone to all the trouble to schedule a vacation, you know, without knowing where you're going, what you're going to do. So it's your destination. And really, you know, your business shouldn't, should be like that too. You should be thinking about it as like, what is the destination that you're headed for? you know, in your business. So why would we purchase a kit, order catalogs, supplies, you know, all the things, set up an office and not know what your goals are going to be. And I'm not saying that you should have it all figured out, like right when you join Pampered Shop or anything, but like, obviously if you bought a kit and made the, you know, dedication to sign up more than likely you were like intending on doing this. Not everybody, <laughs> because we do. We do. Lori's like shaking her head because she's like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of kidnappers out there. There is. But sometimes too, if and they kidnap don't... twice, <laughs> what's that? And they kidnap twice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I mean, most of the time, I think most people have good intentions. It's just that they don't know how to find, figure out what that destination is going to be and know where to go with it. So, 
that's where some of these skills are going to come into play. So, um, you know, vacation is just a week usually. Like Lori, Lori, Lori was luxurious, luxurious this year and went for three weeks. But, um, well, when you're retired, <laughs> <laughs> you're not Next, retired. You're a working. Um, you're a Next working. Time we're retired. going for a couple of months. So, <laughs> hey, that's the way to do it. Then your computer yeah. can come with you, or did it come with you anyway? Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. I still work. had you parties going. Work. Well, you didn't want to work off your phone all that time. I wouldn't either. No. <laughs> but Sarah uh-huh. said she's going. She leaves for Vegas. I think it is on Friday, and she's like, and I have to take my computer, and <laughs> she's <laughs> like, she's like, but I don't want to do it on my phone. So she want, you know, she wants to take her computer. So I would too. Um, I would want to, too. But, you know, a vacation is a week. And so if you're thinking about your business as a whole, like you're hoping that it's going to last for a long time. And, you know, and I wasn't even sure when I started, like my, you know, my goal at that time was I need to be able to stay home with my kids because Graham's hours were too crazy and it was not even going to be worth me working for the amount of money I was going to have to pay for daycare for two kids. You know, it just wasn't going to work. So I had to, you know, look at it like that and just to get this, get us through this. And then we'll see what happens. I didn't know I would be here almost 22 years later. I mean, I was excited about my business very much when I started it, but I had no idea what was going to happen. So your business is for a much longer time. Your Pamper Chef business deserves the same amount of thought and planning and preparation than a vacation does. That's why I want you guys to think about this question. And you've heard me say this. You heard me say this with Trina the other night. What do you want this business to do for you? And really think about that. And I hope, have you guys thought about that since we had our talk or our meeting last week? Yeah. I mean, Kath, we're talking about stuff like that all the time. Lori and I had a nice conversation this week about stuff in her world too. And Connie, how about you? Have you been thinking about that this week? Um. <laughs> you know I oh Connie I love you you know that right nope she's like no nope. uh, I just everything has been going on down here I have a foreign exchange student she's, oh yeah you know I'm not a mom I've never been a mom I've been a temporary stepmom and then every like a couple of years, I'm a, a mom for three or four months and then I have to give it up again. So I, I'm not a mom. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm very unorganized. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're funny. So no, I have not even began to think about it. Okay. Well, that's going to be your job to start thinking about that. Okay. So, you know, and I mean, I could say things like, why would you buy a kid if you didn't want to work? But Some people just don't know. Oh, here comes Dom. Some people just don't know. Like they're like maybe thinking about a little bit of a dream with this and then they just, they don't know what's where it's going to go. So sometimes I think it's hard in the beginning to like kind of figure that all out. And I don't know, maybe you guys feel that way still after a couple years in the business, you might feel like that because sometimes your goals change. Hi, Dom. Hi, Dom. We have a small group. I don't know where all the RSVPs went, but we're here. They were here. They were there last night. Okay. <laughs> Kelly, I saw them. <laughs> Connie was on last night. She was like, um, is this starting soon? I'm like, um, yeah, tomorrow at 7 30 PM <laughs> central time. Um, so basically when it comes down to it, setting goals is like deciding on a vacation, if you will, it is your destination. Clear goals increase your confidence and increase your levels of daily motivation. Attitude is everything. You guys talk, I, you guys hear me and the directors talk about stuff like that all the time. If you're going to think that way, that's the way it's going to go. So attitude is everything. And if you're thinking about your goals all the time, you become what you are thinking about. And that's why like a vision board is so, um, a, such a great thing is because that is your visualization you're going to be able to see that if you keep it out in front of you. Um, goals are clearly the roadmap to your business. Do you want to be paid for $150 a month by staying active? Or do you want to be paid at your consultant level every single 
month, whatever level you, that is that you're at, you wouldn't have signed up more than likely if you didn't. I'm not saying, you know, like I said, there's the kidnappers out there. So there is people that are like, nope, this is what I wanted. And they got out. That was their goal. I mean, really, if you want to be real, that was their goal. They got a kit. They didn't have to pay it back. <laughs> they didn't have to pay the money back they spent on it. And they, you know, that is, I mean, what, what do you do? But I do know many of kidnappers that had no intentions of doing more than like three or four shows and then leaving or even one show. Um, my, my director, Lori was one of them. She had no intentions of doing this, let alone be here as many years as she's been in business. Um, I, so I don't think any of you two either on this meeting started with just wanting to do one show every couple of months. I think probably most of us usually sign up with the intention of like maybe doing at least a show a month, you know, not even every couple of months. Um, I do remember what Trina talked about in your tra her training though. Like that was a big thing for me about your goals have to match your actions or your mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And then your work or your actions have to match your goals. And that was that like was like something I'll be I'll like remember that phrase forever now because I just love the way she put it. And so even if you only wanted to do one show a month, the work still has to match match, you know, your goals. Like you still have to be trying to find reach outs. And that's why sometimes I say to people, sometimes I think it's easier to do like four shows in a month than it is to do one, because then you're it's like more in front of your face then. Um, and then that's how it can get really easily lost and you get like distracted because you, you, you're right. Cause it, it's routine. It's it's, a routine. It becomes yeah. a routine then, you know, mm -hmm. if you haven't done it for a month, then yeah, it's hard. Oh, how, do, how do you set up a Facebook? Oh. Group? How do you do this? How do you, where yeah. you do it more often? I, I remember you always saying that. And once I got where I was doing parties every month, it's like, now, even, you know, I took that three, well, I, I was closing a couple of parties and I had a party, but I went like two or three weeks after I got back or yeah. where I didn't have any parties. I took off the last two weeks in December and, and now when I go to set up my first party, it's like, yeah, trying to get into that swing of things. Cause I yeah. kind of like totally took off for almost three weeks. And after yep. I got back and it was hard to get back into that that groove again. Yes, it is. And even me, like I usually, I usually do take, excuse me, the last couple of weeks of December off too. It's kind of like my break for the year. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I always make sure that I have parties starting in January. You know what I mean? I don't just like take this break and not have it figured out. So that's kind of like my goal in December is to work the first two weeks but have my January set up in a place that I don't feel like I have to work those mm -hmm. last two weeks, you know, so that's, you know, that's a goal I have too. But even for me, I have, um, I had, I ended up having to have, um, my party on Saturday, um, had to cancel the poor, my poor host fell in her shower, broke her nose, a rib and her knee. Ooh. Oh, so that was terrible. So, and ugh, yeah, so anyway, so I had, but I had three and I was struggling a lot with Facebook events about people not seeing their invitations. So I decided to try Evite. Have you guys any heard of Evite? Did we talk about that the other day? I can't remember. So I'm using Evite. It's evite.com and you can set it up as a um, app on your phone. I used it years ago for the mom's club I was in. That was how we like RSVP'd to like things we were doing. And it's awesome, but like trying to like, oh, now I got to set like, you know, like I haven't really done a ton of cooking shows the last few or the last, you know, the last couple of years, I haven't done a ton. So it was like that whole new routine again. I'm like, okay, now I have two more. So what did I do? Okay. I sent it to her two weeks before two and a half, you know, like all that stuff. It's like getting um, back on track again. So but okay, so back to what we were talking about, you know, your goals have to match your actions or your, your work, and then your work, you know, has to match your goals. So you have to be realistic about your business. And so Lori, what, you know, taking a couple weeks off, that's fine because you had your January set. So you're, you know, you're good. Oh, you, had right. goal, you had a goal, you know, you want to be able to take, go for a couple of months and be in, in Florida, do that or wherever you want to go. So so make your goals, write them down and make yourself accountable every day for them. 
um, you have to say it to yourself every day. I'm making this happen. So setting positive affirmations is super important too. And I talk about that a lot. Um, I also think Dominique and I were actually just talking about this the other day where we're going to talk a little bit about the um, journaling like act that I do, but also like making sure that you kind of have yourself ready for what you're going to do the next day. So you're not just like scrambling all the time. Like I hate that. I always have such a better day or even such a better week if I actually do some planning and know what I'm doing. I feel like I can get things accomplished then. And I don't feel like I'm just like running around in circles. Dom, I know you kind of like what you were saying something about that the other day too. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I have to. Like I start my, like today is when I kind of plan out my week even a little bit. Like I want to plan meals. Like I talked to Jim already about it. You know, like we have stuff going on on Wednesday. So plan for them to do something separate. And then each day I've started using that um, like 15 minute. Like calendar. Calendar. Yeah, 15 minute calendar. Yeah. To just kind of like realize like, you know, you can fit this much into this much. And if I'm working, you know, therapy, then I can figure that out. And it's just, it makes it a lot easier. Um, remind me and I'll post the 15 minute calendar on the page again. Cause I don't know if it's been posted for a long time. Um, and have you guys all heard me talk about that before? So the 15 minute calendar is kind of like the squirrel calendar where it's like, I need to get this done today. Or I need to, you know, so it's like 15, setting your day up in 15 minute increments. And some people do it every single day, but some people will do it on a day that they know that they have to get crap done. So then it's like, okay, from seven to seven 15, I'm folding the laundry and putting it away. Like, otherwise the basket's going to still be there at nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> and I don't do anything else during those 15 minutes. I don't answer a text message if I hear it or a Facebook message if I hear it beep. I don't stop to sit down on the interview that's happening on the Today Show at that time. I can hit rewind on my TV and watch it or hit record. You know, I'm focusing and this is what I'm doing for the next 15 minutes. I have to do that sometimes when I'm cleaning. Like if I have like to really clean my house, like, if you know, somebody's coming, you know, people are coming over for dinner or something. I have to do that because I am a good one for like, oh, who's on this team? Oh, I'm going to sit down and watch this interview for the minute. And then I start scrolling on my phone and that, you know, <laughs> the next thing, you know, it's like an hour later. I'm like, oh my gosh, I still need to, I still need to mop the floors or whatever. So yeah. So, um, make sure that you're accountable for what you're going to do, you know, that, you know, in making sure you have a plan for things, but, um, you know, being accountable to like, it comes in the form of a positive affirmations for yourself too. So does anybody do those regularly? No, oh, I tried. Okay. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to give yourself a pep talk. It is. It's super hard to do that, but it is definitely like a proven fact that if you do that, and they even say that if you do it, and you say them out loud, it's even better. So I do most of mine are in my journal. Um, but there's people I've known in the past, one of our director friends, Jenny Kennedy, she has them written down for her year or whatever. I don't know if she decides to change them. They're like laminated and they're in like, I can't remember if it was just like her desk that she has, or if it's in like her drawer in her bathroom, but I've heard of other people too, like writing them on their mirrors too. So then like when they're getting ready in the morning, they can read them out loud and it just keeps it. It's another vis visualization thing. It's right there, you know, and saying things to yourself, like, uh, um, let me see. I have 10 calendars. I have a full calendar of 10 parties on my calendar every month, or, you know, I'm a senior director with pampered chef, you know, stuff like that, saying things, and it can be positive for your you know, your soul, or it can be positive for your biz, you know, things for your business, whatever you can use positive affirmations in any way. I mean, I always think back and think about that movie. Um, oh my gosh, my mind just went completely blank of what it was called the help. Uh -huh. yeah. And remember the little girl, how the, how the maid would say to her all the time, like you are kind, you know, I can't think of like how it goes, but like, that was like, you know, giving, 
positive affirmations, even, you know, back then. So I always loved that one. That just kind of gives me like warm fuzzies when I would see that part yeah. of that. You always said you are kind, you are smart, you are beautiful. Thank you. You were kind, you were smart. You was kind. She said, yeah. <laughs> she was so cute. That little girl was so cute. So, so I do my positive affirmations on note cards and just keep them right by my computer. You so then I look at them girl. Yep. That's, yep. That's yeah. another, I've heard that too. Yep. So it's kind of like, it doesn't matter how you do them. It just matters if you do them. And Sarah was one that thought I was freaking nuts for wanting to do positive affirmations. And then she started doing them and she was like, Oh, I guess I should have listened. <laughs> one of those things that I can say to her, she, see, you should have listened to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, so I have to make goals all the time. I, and that's how I have a consistent show schedule. I mean, you guys are great about that too. Um, but you know, that's how you can earn trips. You can earn excellence awards. You can't just go like, oh, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and I'm going to earn excellence awards this year. That doesn't happen, you know? Um, you know, so like right now, I would like to go to Punta Canta. So I would like, and I'd like to earn an elite trip again, because I've done that a few times and I have not gotten to go on a vacation period. I'm still a little bit nervous and about going out of the country, but I've gotten some good clear checks from my doctors now. So I think it'll be okay. But, um, you know, I had a specific goal this year that I wanted just to earn La Quinta. Cause I wanted that to be like a, like a honeymoon for Daryl and I. So I had to like intentionally do that, you know, like figure out how I was going to make that happen. And, um, you can't just fly by the seat of your pants. You have to plan it out. Um, I wasn't good at this either. I I'm, you know, I'm by any means, am I perfect at goal setting? I'm not, I have to play with things. And I've definitely learned through this process that you have to like kind of break things down and put them into steps too. It can't just be that, you know, you know, my first day of business, I couldn't say I'm going to be a national executive director. I mean, like, that's not how it works. You know, you got to do this first and this first and this first, but, um, it has to be planned out. And that was something I was never taught to do. Um, some of you might've, you know, heard me say this before, but like my mom and dad were just wonderful parents. i came from a very loving home. It was a great environment to grow up in. Um, my parents were very supportive, but my parents were also very, skeptical. They were, you know, they grew up, my dad grew up on a farm in Northern Wisconsin. My mom, you know, they weren't wealthy by any means, maybe even borderline poverty level. You know, if, you know, if you will, my mom grew up in a house with 10 kids and you just didn't talk. I mean, and I don't think they talked like that so much back then. Anyway, you didn't talk about your goals and your dreams. You just didn't do that. I mean, when I joined Pamper Jeff, my mom was like, what did you just do? Like she thought I was insane. I was ruining my life. I was going to lose all this money. It was like the worst decision that I could have. I mean, she just was, they were never, ever, ever, ever risk takers. You know what I mean? Never risk takers. So that was really hard. And honestly, it's been fun. I'm glad. I've, I mean, I've taken my mom to Hawaii now because of this business. Like I love that. And I've just, I'm, I'm proud that like I did it. I've been able to do this and make this work for me all these years. Um, so you have to plan things out and that's one of those things that, that you have to talk like with your recruits and stuff. Cause you guys all have, well, it's kind of, you don't have anybody right now though, do you on your team, but you've had people in your past, but you got to talk to them about stuff like that. Like you can't yeah. just, you can't, you can't just do this by the seat of your pants. Um, let me see here. People don't set goals sometimes because they're afraid of failing at them. And we like to talk a lot about like doing it scared and like just making sure everybody knows that, you know, we're here for them and we can talk about things. And I think that's really, really important in this business too, because you totally feel like you're alone sometimes. I mean, a lot of times you feel like you're alone, especially like now that we've got people like Connie, like, you know, you, I know you've said that to us before, like you feel alone out there. Cause you don't have like a place to go to a meeting to stuff like that. That's hard, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that is definitely, um, part of this, but like being able to make sure that we're in contact with everybody and knowing what, you know, so making sure that, you know, what people on your team and stuff want or find a buddy within the team and be kind of, we used to call them batter bowl buddies. That used to be a 
like used to think, like find a buddy on the team and like work together and plan things together. So we're going to talk a little bit about SMART goals. Um, I'm going to share my screen here, which I'm sure some of you guys have seen this numerous times. Um, there, can you see it? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so S. So this is breaks down into little sections. So SMART is the S. The S in SMART stands for specific. So you really want to think about what do I need to accomplish? Can my goal be broken down into smaller steps? Like I was saying earlier, I can't just tomorrow join Pampered Chef and by Friday be a national executive director. I can't do that. I mean, if I recruited right out the gate, I might be a team leader by the end of the week if I had two people, but really, you know, you have to, you know, think about it. You can't break, you have to break things down into steps. Your goal should be um, as specific as possible. And then answer questions to yourself, like, what is your goal? How often or how much, where, when will it take place? What is going to move you forward? Remember, that's kind of how I started out this whole talk today. It's like, how are you, is it going to help you move forward? Um, you know, sometimes it might be like, like it's saying when and where um, your goal might be to walk across stage at national conference as a director. So obviously, if you're going to have a goal for that, you're going to make sure you promote to director by either June 1st or July 1st, whatever, whatever they say it is this year. And then you can walk across stage on July of 2023 with and get your red scraper, you know, so you know that's what it is. And so you can kind of visualize that. Um, measurable is the M. Did anybody have any questions on specific? Mm -hmm. Okay. Measurable. How will I know when it's accomplished? Can my goal be measured for progress? Measurement will give you specific feedback and hold you accountable. However, not all goals are measurable. Because like I said, you can't just become a national executive director, boom, like that. And another really good, you know, thing is how, what was the one I was going to say? I can't think now what I, I just, it completely left my head what I was going to say on that one. It'll come back to me. Um, but you have to be able, you know, you can't always measure things is what I was going to say. Like I, this is an example. This is what I was going to say in my journal. Like one of the things that I say in there is I am an exceptional mom. I want to be an exceptional mom. I know I'm not always an, ex you know, I'm not an exceptional mom and I probably never will be an exceptional mom. So I can't always measure that. That's one of those ones that will probably be in my journal forever. You know, I have another one that's, um, you know, like my husband, like, cause I have, I've like in my journal, it's like a couple things that are about me personally, like my personal stuff. I have some stuff that's like health stuff. I have stuff for business, you know, so it's like some different goals there. But um, some things just can't be measured. Like if I say that I have a healthy and loving relationship with my husband, if that's one of my goals, it wasn't like when Daryl and I just had our anniversary last month that we went, okay, our relationship is now healthy and loving. <laughs> like you can't, it doesn't, you know, that's not, <laughs> you can't do it like that. So there's certain things like that. You have to like, think about like realistically that way. Um, a is for attainable. You want to feel challenged, but you also want to be able, be able to attain it. So that's kind of like the, the whole thing of like weight loss goals. Like I want to lose a hundred pounds. Okay. Is that attainable? You know, they should push you. Do you have the means to do it? You know, and your goal should push you, but are you like setting yourself up, set up for failure by saying a hundred pounds? Like, do you need to maybe break that down? Like I said earlier into smaller steps and let's start with like 25 pounds and not because, you know, if you haven't lost 10 pounds in the first week, you might be like kicking yourself, you know, and you, and that's not even healthy to do that anyway. So you have to like, think about stuff like that. Um, so are your goals attainable? Go, you know, goals should be 
put should push you, but it's important that they're achievable. Like, so don't set something so high that it's going to frustrate you in the, you know, in the end. And if you don't meet it and, you know, we also talk about too, that goals are just a dream with a timeline, if you will, and not everything can be timed, but like, it's a dream that you have. So like, just just go for it and try not to like be miserable if it doesn't happen exactly when you want it to happen. Um, relevant is, is R and actually relevant can also be like realistic too. the R can stand for. So, you know, does it seem worthwhile? Don't create a goal that will discourage you from accomplishing it. That's kind of like what I was just saying too. your goal and time frame should be realistic. So don't, don't set yourself up for failure by saying like, I want to lose a hundred pounds in two months. Cause that's just not even, you know, that's not even, that's crazy. That's crazy talk unless you were on like the biggest loser or something like that back in the day when they used to do that show. Um, and then time bound, when will I accomplish this goal? What are my start and end dates? This will help accountability and motivation. So there's certain things that absolutely have to have a timeline on them, like a trip. You have to make sure that you have the required trip points to earn a trip by December 31st or excellence awards. Those are on a fiscal year. By May 31st, have you met what you the qualifications to receive an excellence award? Um, and, you know, like weight loss, we were just talking about too. Weight loss can be like that, you know, it's hard. You can't, it's 100 pounds is a lot. But what if the doctor told you that in order to have knee replacement surgery, you need to lose 100 pounds? You might have a little bit more of a time factor if that, you know, depending on how bad your knees were, you know, so that's the kind of stuff like, so, you know, think about it. So being smart, you know, right there, it tells you right there, you need to be specific. You have to be able to measure it. Is it going to be attainable? Is it relevant or realistic? Like realistic, I like that. I like that word almost better with goal setting. And then do you have a time frame that it needs to be done by? And a lot of times in a business, that is the case. Um, let's see here. Okay, so goals, the things to kind of think about with goals too um, for you guys in our business is things like what title will I hold each month or at the end of the year or quarter? I also like to think of our business a lot. We talk about quarter quarters and, you know, that's kind of how we do excellence awards. So you can kind of break up your year into, into goals. So, you know, if you can sell at least $3,000 in the first, you know, January, February, March, at least that total, you can earn an excellence award. Or not excellence award, I'm sorry, dinner, dinner of excellence. Um, if you recruit somebody and they qualify, you can earn dinner of excellence. If you promote up into to title your in title yourself, you can earn dinner of excellence. Um, so it's kind of a little bit easier to look at it in those smaller sections. So kind of figure out for you if that is what works better for you, because those are kind of those baby steps that you're taking and making it a little bit more attainable because you can look at it a little bit clearer. And that's where I was saying, I don't know if anybody was able to, but you guys know where it's at, it's in Dash, is that 90 day tracker that can break your business down and set, help you set your goals that tracker can in 90 days. As a matter of fact, for the director team this year, I printed all that stuff out and I put it in a little um, spiral, a little bound book for them to be able to keep track of their goals for the year. Is that working out good for you guys so far? I like it. Dom, are you using it? Look at you. I don't like you right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know Kathy's been using, I've been using it. I yeah, like I get it right here. No, <laughs> look at you I, go. No. Yeah. Look at you go. I like it. So it's been working good. Um, so another one is how many team members do I want to add to my team? Um, what's the goal I'm striving for? Do you have like something specific? Like I need to pay off a credit card. I need to, you know, I want to earn a vacation. I know like for me, one of the big things like before Daryl and I got married or even before we moved in together, um, I didn't have a ton of it, but I had some credit card debt and I wanted to come into our marriage with no debt like that. 
you know, extra stuff. So like I, I worked really hard and made sure that I had that paid off before we, I'm actually, before we even moved in together. So, um, that, you know, that was like, so you have to kind of like, think about things like that. Um, you know, what's the goal you're striving for? Is there a particular reason? I mean, when I started, like I said, when I started this business, I needed to be able to stay home with my kids because it wasn't, you know, going to be daycare, but that's not my goal right now. Your goals, you know, your goals are going to change from year to year. Your why is going to change from year to year. Um, you know, you know, like Connie, for instance, I know you've had some team members, but is that like, is that, you know, think about that. Like, is that something that you still want? Do you think you want to add people to your team? Some people have no desire to ever do that. But if you do have desire to do that, then you need to make sure that your goals are going to match those. You know, that's, you know, like what Trina was saying, make sure your goals are matching. Who's texting me? Hmm. Um, let's see. You are the key to the successes that you are going to have this year. And another thing that I, you know, want to say is that you are the only person that can do this. I can be here to help you or, or your director can be here to help you, or we can, you know, be here for each other, but I can't guarantee anything for your business because I'm not in charge of your business. You are, you know, and that's the big thing to remember. And, um, I, I don't, I don't like to say it cause I don't like to sound harsh or mean cause it's not how I'm intending it. But I, you know, I say to people, sometimes I can only put into you what you put into yourself. And if you're not doing the work, you know, it's the whole walk, the walk, talk, the talk, you know, you've got to be able to do that. So make sure that your goals are aligning with that. So you're doing the work that aligns with that. So you can be successful. And let me see. So what are you working for in your business? What could this business do for you? Those things that should tell you that right there. What is this business going to do for me? So think about these categories. You know, this is your life. These are your dreams. So think about your business as a whole. And it's not like I, this shouldn't be necessarily in a, it's not in a certain order, but these are things that you can think about when it comes to goal setting is business, personal growth. That was one thing that I didn't even realize that was going to end up coming to me in this business. Never even really thought about that. And I, you know, I've grown in so many ways since I've started this business and I didn't even know that that was going to be a part of it. Um, finances. Family, you know, family could mean like being able to spend more time with your kids. Maybe, you know, doing this job would make it so you didn't have to work another part-time job or even your full-time job for that matter. Um, even like spirituality wise, you know, what it could do for you is, you know, just even your, like your mental health, having something to focus on. I know for me, like when everything happened with Graham, my business was like the thing that I had to focus on it, or it, I I had that to focus on so it could kind of keep me from sitting and thinking about and being stressed out about all the sad stuff and the hard stuff that my kids were going through and I was going through like that. It just kind of like gave me a focus point. Um, and then another one can be like health and fitness too. So obviously with goals, health and fitness for sure goes in, into play with that. Um, so breaking it down into quarters too, we've talked about this before. So this is um, what like Rachel Hollis's Start Today Planner goes, but I've been doing, we've talked about this a little bit. I've been doing some more work with um, another um, social media um, person that's professional development wise and stuff like that. She, her name's Kristen Boss, and she basically does the same kind of a practice as this, but being, you know, having a gratitude um, based, you know, vision and journal and a goal. So being grateful for the things that happen to you on a daily basis. Like today, I mean, we had to drive to two for two hours to go to a, a hockey game that lasted for like 40 minutes, <laughs> which it was super fun, but like, and it was, I mean, it's not it was great, but like, I'm so thankful. Like we have to do it again in a few weeks. And like, I was so thankful today that the weather was nice. So there's like little things like be thankful for the little things in life. Don't always have to go right for the big stuff, but like, 
be thankful for just something little, you know, even if it was like, I had enough coffee to brew a pot this morning, like (laughs) seriously, like little things like that. It's hard sometimes when you're having to write down five things a day to be grateful for. It's hard to like think, I mean, I know that sounds weird, but it is like, think about just the little things. I'm, I can't even think of one right now. Like of, sometimes I really have to sit and think like, I don't want to write just, you know, I'm thankful for my children or I'm thankful for my husband. You know, I could say something like, I'm thankful that Q and actually came out on the couch and talked to me today, you know, cause she's almost 16 and she is annoyed half the time. <laughs> Domni experienced that when she was here the other day, <laughs> didn't you now? <laughs> so like little things like that, like I had this great little moment with Q today, you know, or something like that. Just be grateful for that stuff. And I think that when you're in that grateful mindset, like your whole demeanor kind of changes as if you focus on focus, you know, when you focus on positivity and and gratefulness like that. So that can change your whole thing. And then writing down 10 dreams, which is kind of like your positive affirmations in a way and write them down though, as if they already happened. I know Rachel Hollis's big one. I mean, she went big. She really did. But her, one of her big ones was, as I am an, I'm a, I am a New York times bestseller and it took her like 10 years. She kept writing it and kept writing it, but then that dream came true. So, um, you know, one that will probably, you know, well, right now I have, you know, I am, I am a senior director with Pamper Chuff cause I want to get back to senior director, but there's going to be those certain ones. Like I was talking about, about being an exceptional mom, like that one's probably always going to be on my list. And that's okay because, you know, we're all works in progress. So that's okay. Um, But then what you can do is when you have some of these goals and some of them that are like more measurable, then you can like, you're writing them every day and you're writing these down every day, but you can have one that you can focus on. Like the credit card one that I was talking about earlier, that one was on mine for like a year. And I finally was able to kind of like check it off and I could add something else on there because I finally achieved it. Okay. All right. So this is my 2020 vision. Oops, this was my 20. Oops, what should I just do? Hold on. Stop share. I'm going back. I don't know what I even did. There, can you see it now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so I brought thought I would bring back my 2021. Cause I kind of like to show you like the progress with this. So what vision boards, vision board is a special board that displays what you want in life and you can hang it in a space where you see it daily. A few years back, I went to start doing mine and I started doing them, um, digitally and like this will not this one, but my 2023 one will be like my, um, wallpaper, like on my calendar. Uh, or my calendar on my computer. Um, this is my one from 2015. This was a paper one. Does anybody <laughs> see a, a, see something here in common from my last one? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman will always be on my vision board. Wonder Woman will always be on my vision board because she was like the girl power woman when I was growing up. She was my Halloween costume. She was my thermos and lunchbox when I was growing up. And I love her. And I, I, I'm sure some of you guys have heard me say this before, but I love the, I, not that I don't like the new Wonder Woman, but I love the Linda Carter woman, Wonder Woman, because that was my Wonder Woman. So I love that. So back in 2020, you know, and this was, remember, this was January of 2020. This was prior to COVID 2020. Um, you know, so I was still coming off of a year, you know, a little over a year after my husband passed away. And, you know, so like one of my things on here was like, you can look at your life and see chaos and stress, or you can look at your life and see blessings. It's all how you put a spin on things. And so, yes, I felt like my life was chaotic and stressful and, you know, but I had to try to look at it like, I'm alive and my children still have at least their mom and we have a house to live in and my business so far has sustained us as a family 
And, you know, I had to think about all that stuff. And, you know, so, you know, in the middle here, this is tough, but so am I, you know, life is being tough right now, but so am I. And I had my picture and I just kept, you know, saying to myself, I have to, I have to keep smiling. And, um, I've told you, you guys have all, have you guys all heard me say the whole story of the superhero? Stance. The stance. The stance. Yep. So the stance of a superhero, um, if you stand in that position, like, like exactly like Linda Carter is standing in that position, it's scientific study that shows if you stand like this in a superhero pose for just five minutes before a job interview or a big presentation or any hard task, you will not only feel more confident, you will perform immeasurably better. Super po power posing like a superhero tr transforms you into one psychologically. Harvard social scientist affirms that even 120 seconds of a powerful posture increases testosterone about 20% while dropping cortisol, which is your stress hormone, 25%. So you really are a superhero when you use that pose. So I think that's pretty awesome. And so that's why I love that particular picture of Linda Carter. I had it framed. I might've told you guys this before. I had it framed and mm -hmm. I was going to put it in my office and then Graydon moved in and I don't have an office anymore. So mm -hmm. I'll get it up there when I have an office someday again. Um, and so then I, here. So that was my 2015 one before I was, I think 20, 2019 might've been my first digital one. And then this is my one for this year. So there's Wonder Woman again, and I want to get back to elite seller status. So I want to do that. I love my, me some Lady Gaga too. And this one I loved, you can be whoever you choose to become in the future, just do it. Just see it and visualize it. And every day of your life, project that about yourself. And that's where, you know, kind of that in the superhero pose, I'm projecting that when I'm in my superhero pose is kind of how I look at it. Um, I would really like to be an elite trip achiever again. And I would love to work on the executive trip this year. I'd like to see if I can work on that because I do have a goal to be a senior director by conference and a year end goal of an executive director. Okay. Um, I also, you know, my family means everything to me. And so I, I say that when we have each other, we have everything and I have a very big, you know, my kids, they've been, you know, my kids have been around this my whole life. Isaac still is like, you have to do what? Like, he doesn't understand that I'm working. Like, he's like, you're going to go where? Like, he doesn't understand it. But, um, you know, they, Daryl's very, very supportive of my business. And I, that's, you know, so important to me. Um, I have on here to protect our culture. I want to protect the culture of our team. I want us to work together. I want us to be supportive. Um, you know, it's it's a lot different than a few years ago when it was just me and Sarah. You know, we've got, you know, a director team of five now, and we've got people all over the United States and trying to keep people all together and keep them motivated. And it's it's a hard sometimes. So I want to make sure that our culture stays really strong and we're in this together, you know, it really in this together. Um, so I have, you know, some big goals that I want to try to accomplish again this month. I have, I still haven't met the goal of recruiting a hundred people in our org. We made it to 60 this year. So that's the biggest we've ever had. So 60 people. So let's try for another 40. I want to try to do 30 new personal recruits myself. Um, double our org sales. I still would love to be a million dollar owner of a team. You know, I would love to be able to say I own a million dollar organization. We met with 6,000 or 656,000 last year. So that was over the year before it was, I mean, awesome. So we're, you know, we're getting there. It's not too, we're not too far away from having a million dollars in sales for our org for the year. Um, I would love to have a personal sales of a hundred thousand dollars. I've never hit that mark. I've never been higher than I think it was 85. So I'd love to hit a hundred thousand. I'd love to earn excellence in two categories. I earned tax excellence in two categories two years ago. And then last year I only did it in one. So I want to do it in two again. Um, I'd love to earn that executive trip and Getting back up to um, executive director or getting to executive director too is awesome because there's a car allowance 
And I love to be able to have that extra money. And the thing about the car allowance at executive level is it's not like they actually pay your car payment for you. They just give you the cash. So really you can use it on whatever you want. So even if you had a car payment of like $300 or something, you'd still have the $200 in cash. So I think that's pretty awesome. So that's my vision board for the year. What has anybody worked on theirs yet? I know Lori, you usually typically do one, don't you? Sorry, I'm muted. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, usually I didn't this year, but, or I haven't yet this yeah, year. Right, I've thought about time. it, but mm -hmm. yeah, it, it yeah, I like might. Do it in your, wasn't it in your planner? Mm hmm Yeah. So some you Yeah, and I'm, I'm not doing stuff. the planner this year. Oh, so you're not doing hers? I'm, no, I'm trying to go more digital, so. Yeah. So that's what I did is, and that was on a Google slide. You could do it in Canva. I just did mine in a Google slide. And then I just, like I said, I'll end up putting it as the wallpaper on my computer. And so then it's there every time I open my computer, anybody else do one? I haven't physically done one, but as you were writing, I've got it all in my head. <laughs> so I, I was writing it all down as you were <laughs> like, awesome. this is what I would do. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like I said, it's okay. It's, it's your board. So you can do whatever you want with it. Um, there's a principal that I work with, um, in town here at one of the schools I sub at, and she does one every year. And I think it's so cute because she posts it on Facebook and, um, it's never anything like she's like got her doctorate and everything, like as far as a principal goes. So she's, um, she's not like hers is always more about like the fun stuff in life. And I always just think it's so cute to see what she puts like, so this was one, this was hers this year. She posted it a couple of days ago. I just think it's cute. You know what I mean? So some people just need, you know, they just need to do that just for the inspiration. I know another family here in town that I've had lots of parties with, um, Amanda, her name is. And her and her family, you know, kind of like Kathy and Dom, like we just did the um, year in review for like our calendar. She and her family do that. Like her boys are in, well, they're probably in high school now, but her and her husband and her three boys, they sit at their dining room table and they plan their year as a family. Where do we want to go on vacation in J July? What do we, what, what, what do we want? What are our goals for our family this year? You know, is it to go to church every Sunday together? Is it to make sure that we eat dinner around the table together at least, you know, three nights a week? You know, they, I think that's so cool that they do that as a family. I'm not saying that like Daryl and I don't talk about things, but to me, I was thinking to myself, what an amazing thing to teach your kids to do as they're growing up. So they can think about things like that. You know, they're probably, cause I know that there's a lot of families, I mean, I'd say most families don't do that. So I'm like thinking to myself, those poor boys' wives someday, because those guys are going to be going, aren't we going to family plan, right? You know, because <laughs> they do that every year. So I think that's pretty awesome that they do that. But, um, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be. It's your, it's your dream, you know, vision. It's your whatever. So I will tell you though, did anybody take the time to do that vision casting that I posted in the event? Was that of the YouTube video or something or? Yeah, it no, was a video. I, I started it, but I didn't get to finish it. Okay. So it's something that you make need to make sure that if you do it, you have absolute, you have the time to have absolutely no interruptions. It's like 45 minutes about, um, you need to be in a complete, almost like, like think you're in like meditation mode, almost like, <laughs> and it was. I've done kind of some things like that before, but I think I just really fully wasn't letting myself feel it. And I said to myself for this one, I'm going to really, really feel it. And it was one of those things like, like we talk about like your why should make you cry. And that was what that, like when I did that with her, I was like, oh my gosh, I might've finally hit the, you know, nail on the head. I just it was like super, super powerful. So if you just really need some inspiration and some really digging, you know, into your soul of what you want, you know, whether it's 
for other things in life, or if it's just for simply for your business, do that and really take the time to, you know, if you're trying to find your yourself or trying to find what you want this year, seriously do that. The questions that she makes you think about where you do it. I mean, I pretty much did, I had my eyes closed pretty much the whole time too. So you were really envisioning things in your mind. Um, it was awesome. It was so powerful. So take some time to do that. If you, if you're feeling like you need to do something like that, I highly recommend it. So does anybody, does that, did that help? I felt like I wasn't very inspirational this time, but <laughs> try to be, but um, anybody have any questions? No. Hmm. Okay. I was hoping more people would be on. I hope that people can watch it. So Sarah was out at the bar. <laughs> they were, they were, she told me they, they decided to go out for some drinks and fun. I'm like, go for it. So they were, I, I she's, she just had a busy week too. So I'm like, just go, who cares? It's fine. You're funny. So, um, so yeah. Um, I don't really think I have anything else guys, so I can let you go. I can stop recording.